Hello and welcome back to the notes. Today has been dominated by the unemployment data for January, much of which was quite surprising, and by a really startling market reaction. Now let's take a look first at the unemployment data. The headline number for non-farm payrolls was an increase of 150,000, somewhat lower than anticipated, but still showing growth. As for the unemployment rate, it dropped from 5% to 4.9%, very healthy. But of course, we all know that the participation rate, the proportion of uh, uh, the American population seeking work has fallen very sharply. Perhaps the best way to look at this is uh, in this chart, which you look where you uh, account for the falling participation rate by looking at the in percentage of all those over 16 who are in work. And on that basis, you can see that, yes, there has been uh, a, a significant and steady recovery uh, since 2009, but it's been from such an appallingly low base after such a shocking decline during the Great Recession that it's not surprising we are seeing so many people voicing their anger about the economy on the campaign trail. Now, the next uh, and most important piece of data on the, from the employment data concerns average hourly earnings, which we can show you here. Uh, and if we take a look at uh, earnings, you can see that uh, they were painfully low for a long time. They are now, however, ticking up noticeably. They're uh, at 2.5%, which is above the Fed's official inflation target of 2%. On the face of its continued steady if unspectacular growth in employment and renewed wage pressure would add up to a strong justification for a further rise in rates from a low base. However, all other things really aren't equal. What you instead saw today, despite this evidence, was uh, emphatic evidence from the bond market that they continue to believe we're going to see uh, deflation, possible recession, and no rate rises from the Fed. If we take a look at this next chart, you can see that um, US 10-year inflation break-evens, this is the uh, implicit forecast for inflation over the next 10 years derived from the bond market, dropped to a new post-crisis low today, despite the wage data. Similarly, if you take a look at the gap between 10-year and 2-year bond yields, they are that, that has flattened to a new post-crisis low as well. Plainly, the market is still betting that the Fed will not be raising rates. Now we come to the reaction on the stock market, and we've had a really bad day. What's perhaps most intriguing is exactly who is leading and who is lagging. If we take a look at this chart, which is just gives you some of the, the uh, more important figures uh, in what we've seen for the year so far, very intriguingly, energy stocks, even though the falls in the stock market have been led by the falling oil price, energy stocks have actually been ahead of the market. ExxonMobil, the biggest energy company of them all, is actually up for the year. Instead, declines have been led by big tech and by big banks. Uh, and obviously, you can see there a spectacular fall for last year's big hero, Amazon, very ironically balanced by a strong gain by Walmart, one of the big victims last year. All of this whiff has a strong whiff of uh, funds being forced to uh, sell their crowded trades, sell their uh, very popular uh, stocks into which people are crowded, cover the uh, stocks which have been very popular for people to short. Very worrying state of affairs. Now, next week, we will be hearing from Janet Yellen of the Fed, who will be presenting to uh, Congress. It's, she plainly has an extremely difficult job at this point, but what she has to say will be very interesting, and even more interesting, of course, will be how the market reacts.